Hello, today I'm going to show you how you can sketch out or block out clothing in just a couple minutes so that you have a good base that you can add more details on or uh, sculpt on for instance. Uh, keep in mind these are just the base, I'm going to explain the base shapes and how you make everything, not every single detail. But these techniques are mostly what I use just in finer detail to how I build up my clothing. So let's get started. So start off with a plane and move it approximately into a beginning position. Where where it is doesn't really matter. It's up to you where you feel like it works the best. Then I turn on the mirror modifier again. Make sure clipping is on. And the difference with this mode, instead of building out from a cube, now I can start to extrude as I want. To make loops and whatnot. Let's turn on the subdivision modifier so that we get a smoother shape here. And this can be a little bit more advanced, but it's not that much harder. You, you need a little bit of practice from it. And uh, the point here isn't about super accuracy. Again, it's for getting something out quickly so that you just get out the idea it's sketching right and then you can refine it in sculpting or with other means later on uh, so let's merge these three just to make this quick and as you can see now i made almost the same thing in just almost a minute ish and it even looks a little bit better in my opinion so that's the second way and this is the way I use the most because it's a little bit easier to control and get out and especially if your character is already sculpted you can just do the same thing just without the mirror modifier and try to keep things as level as possible. Another technique I want to show you is using the shrink wrap modifier like I've done with this paste this and this pants and I start usually or how you start is depending on what you want but I usually do the previous method where I find wherever I feel like starting and this I usually do based on where I know it's usually the most difficult so I just learn you learn these things over time but I turn on a mirror modifier a shrink wrap again Let's say I want it to go around the body, so I just make it around the body quickly, move it a little bit closer. And I want it to be sort of a swimsuit leotard, so I'm just gonna quickly extrude this up here. And then quickly down here. And what I do now is that I turn on the sh uh, shrink wrap modifier and then press the body as the target. Right away it might look a little bit weird because now everything is trying to shrink wrap to it and it's on surface with zero offset. But the settings I usually like to do is above or outside surface. It makes a small difference, but I, I think one of the differences is how it's clipping through. And it's also important to have the subdivision before the shrink wrap, because if it's after, then it's going to smooth out. It won't give the extra geometry for the shrink wrap to work, it, work with. So what I usually do at this point is that I like turning on the solidifier because that can fix some of that problem and then do another subdivision to smooth it out and then you can either tune out the solidifier or you can add some more shrink wrap and at this point now i can start to add a little bit more loops and cut out things and uh move things the way I want to. Again, this isn't a super perfect way of doing things, but you can make clothing very quickly using this method. Let me actually turn on a darker. 
And it actually looks decent here, but let's say you don't want uh, their, this part to cave in. A p thing you can do is you can select these edges, control G, assign new group, and this is making a new vertex group. So when you go back to the shrink wrap modifier, you see there's a vertex group here. You can select that. And now it's only the these two that's being shrink wrapped, but we want opposite. So you can press on this invert button and you can try to move it a little bit closer. This usually creates some, it's a little bit hard to see here, but you can see how it's like going out again. So what I usually do is I go into vertex mode and I go to blur, turn the strength down, and then I tap it a little bit. You can also turn on uh, wireframe mode here. So it's a little bit easier to see uh, how something moves. Let me just paint this a little bit for you so that you can see the changes. So, uh, you can very quickly see how the topology is changing from that. And this is the beauty with the group modifier, because now I can use both of them. Let's say I want this to be a jacket kind of thing, where I have some puffy arms like this, and I want to make sure that it's sticking to the arm on the bottom section here then i can select this loop and then alt g again make new vertex group then go in shrink wrap modifier select the target which i want to be the arm this time uh, or the body and the arm is the same thing Then i select the vertex group and as you can see now it's sticking only here Again, I turn on a bow surface, I move it a little bit out, turn on solidify and another subdivision to smooth it out. And I give this, this a little bit more thickness. Then we can move this down to get the nicer effect. And now you can see that it's already looking better. I often use this a little bit here and there around on models as well. But these have been how I usually go on about making clothes quickly. But you ask me, what if I want more detail? So, uh, so one of the things I do then is that I often make a shift D duplicate of it just to save it. And then I can apply the mirror modifier and one level of subdivision and shrink wrap. I will keep these here because they're just the thickness. And I also don't want to apply them because when I do a multi-resolution layer, it's going to have to deal with way more stuff. I'm going to turn this off now just for it to lag less when I'm sculpting. But what a multi-resolution layer is, it's basically subdivision, but you can sculpt on top of it. I don't, you can use this for... Uh, when you want to animate and stuff, but it has problems with shape keys, so use it at your own uh, accord. So yeah, I usually use this method if I want some more detail and more control over where I want things to happen or make some small folds and stuff. I don't have my pen connected right now, so I'm just gonna do a very quick job at this. But this is how I usually go on about adding detail. So I feel like at this point, it's important to have most of the important structures down in the first place. And because if I'm going to edit this now and add more loops and or uh, information in general then it might start to bug out multi-resolution since you're changing or adding to the geometry dra dramatically so another tip if you want to edit in symmetry mode make sure 
your geometry or origin is in the center of the geometry by origin to geometry no yes <laughs> and then i usually select everything open the search bar click mesh or search sim for symmetrize then depending on which side you want to symmetrize you have to do minus x to plus x or plus x to minus x plus x to minus x usually means the right side copy it over to the left and that's usually what i like to do so i'm going, going to do this here and now if i turn on symmetry here since i just symmetrized them and they have copied location they will add it in symmetry so yeah that's it for today uh, let me know if there's some subjects you want me to cover or if you have some suggestions to how i can do things differently uh, this whole tutorial thing is very new for me and it's very hard for me to do things and explain it at the same time and keep it short so i'm still trying to figure out what's the most natural to me it's a little bit stressing honestly but it might be something i get used to or maybe i will just do more non-edited long form uh tutorials let me know what you think and what you prefer and i will also appreciate it a lot if you could like and subscribe and i wish you a good day bye bye